Welcome to the Bentex 7X sheet metal plate tutorial. Before we start, we're going to go over some things that all of our customers should come to understand in order to use their software efficiently. There is no TriStar in the sheet metal designer, but you can simply visualize your design from a bird's eye view. The X and Y axis point in the display area is referred to as the origin, and will be the starting point for most projects. To access a third dimension view, you need to change it by clicking the display drop down menu and changing the display to either 3D wireframe or 3D shaded. Pick points are used for everything, so what are they? Pick points are simply points in 3D space created by the user that are meant to define where the parts in the project will be placed. Once pick points are placed in the display area, you can build off them by using them as reference points for other points. Most of the time, you can think of them as the end of your tape measure. The apex of a bend is really the intersection of the two outside lines or two inside lines as if there wasn't a radius. This applies on all sheet metal bends. When free select is activated, the points that are made in the display area are not confined to a specific area. Every point will be placed exactly where the user clicks the cursor. When free select is deactivated, the new point will be placed by using the nearest point as a reference. This is true for not just points, but lines, arcs, holes, and other things. When creating bent parts with the sheet metal designer, it is important for you to remember that the bending radius is the inside radius of the bend. Start by selecting the plate icon and maximizing the screen. Now, under the Point sub-tab, select the Incremental option and type 8 into the X field. Then, click on the origin to place the first point 8 inches to the right of it. Now replace the 8 with a 0 and type 6 into the Y field. From there, select the two points in the display area to create two new points 6 inches above them. Then, go to the Line sub-tab, select the Continuous checkbox, and select each of our points in succession to create the first flange. The line will want to continue on creating, so click the Cancel button. Then, go to the Part tab. Since we only have a half-inch material saved to our library, we have to enter new information. So, go to the Tools tab at the top of the screen and select the Plate Sheet Library. From there, select the Add New button, type .25 into the Material Name field and .25 in the Thickness field, and save the material. It will show up on the Material list to the left. Then, select the other Add New button and create a new bending radius. Type .5 into the Inside Bending Radius field and leave the K factor at 40. Then close the window. Now, select the material from the drop-down menu and select the Define Flange button. Then, click on the area just outside of the rectangle in the display area. You can always tell if your flange was defined correctly by changing the view in the display to 3D shaded. Now go to the Bends sub-tab to start creating bends and additional flanges. First, make sure that all the information in the Bend Properties section is adjusted to our specifications. So change the height of the new flange by typing 3 in the Flange Initial Height field and change the bend location information by selecting Outside Apex in both the Parent and Child Bend Location drop-down menus. Then select the New button to start placing flanges. Click to the left side of the base flange to create the first bend there. Select the OK button and do the same thing on the other side. 
Now, you must define the flanges individually. Select Flange 2 from the flanges list and go back to the Definition sub-tab and click on the Define Flange button. Then, select the outer edge of the highlighted flange to define it. Repeat the process with Flange 3 to finish defining the part. Now select the base flange so we can add features to it. Open the Create tab, choose the Point sub-tab and select the Incremental option again. Then type 2 in the X field, 3 into the Y field and click the Origin to place the new point. From there, go to the Whole sub-tab and select the Square option. Leave the specifications as they are and click the new point to place the hole there. Now we're going to create new pick points to make a user defined hole. So go back to the point sub tab and select the angle option to create points with. Type 2 into the distance field and click the point inside the square using it as a reference. Then type 270 in the angle field one in the distance field and select the new point in the display area. Then change the angle back to zero, type two in the distance field and select the new point. Finally, change the angle to 90 and select the new point to finish the outline. Now go back to the line sub tab and use the two points option and select each of the points we've just made. Make sure to do this either clockwise or counterclockwise, and then click Cancel once all four lines have been placed. Now we're going to create an arc at the intersection of two of our lines. So go to the Arc sub-tab, check the Auto Trim checkbox, and type 0.5 in the Radius field. Then select the bottom and right intersecting lines of the hole we just created. Click on the Part tab, select the Define Flange button, and click just outside the base flange to define it. In changing the display to 3D Shaded Mode, we can see the definition of our part in full. Next, we'll use different functions and methods to produce more holes. Start by selecting Flange 2 from the flanges list to highlight it as the flange we'll be working on. Then open the Create tab and the Point sub-tab. From there, select the Entity Center option. This will place a pick point at the center of whatever item you click on in the display area. Click on the left border of Flange 2 to place the point there. Then select the Incremental option again and type 1.5 in the X field, 0 in the Y field, and click the new point we've just created. Next, to create a circle in an unconventional way, open the Arc sub-tab and select the Values option. Check the Full Circle checkbox and type 0.5 in the Radius field. Then, place it on the pick point in the center of flange 2. Now go back to the Part tab and define the part again. Then you can select Flange 3 from the flanges list and prepare to make and duplicate features. Start working on Flange 3 by going to the Create tab and the Point sub-tab. Type a minus sign in the X field and a 1 in the Y field. Then select the lower right hand corner of the active flange to place the point. Now go to the whole sub tab and select the rectangle option to start our new feature. Then type a 1 in the length field, 0.5 in the width field, and a 0.1 in the corner radius field. Finally, select the point we made on flange 3 to place the rectangle. Now, to make a duplication of the feature, go to the Edit tab and the Move sub-tab. From there, under the Features to Include section, uncheck the All checkbox and check the Holes checkbox. Then, check the Duplicate checkbox, type 4 in the Number of Copies field, and type 1 in the Vertical field. 
Lastly, click on the rectangle in the display area and select the Complete button. Then select Flange 3 from the Flanges list and define it within the Part tab to finish. Now we're going to go through the process of transferring this part out to the assembly interface so we can add another part to it. Go up and select the Transfer button and click on New Assembly. The Prepare for Assembly window will appear. This is where you can determine the coupler location and rotation of your part before transferring. Start setting the position of the part by selecting the Axis button and clicking the red axis. Then click the Rotate button three times to move the part where we want it. Our part is now face forward toward the front field and ready to be brought into assembly. The red point in the middle of the axis is the coupler or the anchor point that will be linked up to another point in assembly. We won't need to change this for our purposes. Select the OK button and a window will appear asking you to name the part. Leave the part's name as is and press OK. From here you can see the part in the master list in assembly and can paste it directly in the display area. Select the TriStar to place the part there. Now we have to make a pick point here to match up with the one we're going to make on the next plate. So go to the pick points tab, type 3 into the ceiling field. Click the Tri Star as a reference and click Apply. Afterwards, select the plate icon from the icon menu bar and prepare to make another plate to attach to the other. In the new plate project, type 10 in the X incremental field and an 8 in the Y field. Click on the origin to place the point. Now go into the Line sub tab and select the Rectangle Two Points option. Then click on the origin followed by our other point to create the rectangle. Now we have to define it before sending it to our assembly. So go back to the Part tab, select the .25 material and define the part by clicking the Define Flange button and the outside of the part in the display area. Now select the Transfer button and click on Existing Assembly to transfer the part. When the Prepare for Assembly window appears, set the position of the part by selecting the Axis button and clicking the red axis. Then click the Rotate button three times to move the part like we did before. With our part face forward, we now need to set a point that will anchor to our other point. So under the Create Points section, type 1 into the front field and 1 into the right field. Then click the Set Reference button and select the intersection of the axes and click Apply to place the point. Now set the coupler to the point we've made and click OK. Leave the part's name as is and press OK. From here, minimize the window, pull up the assembly, and simply click the green pick point to finish the part. Thank you for completing our sheet metal plate tutorial.